Hello, and welcome, I'm Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's try out some Thea The Awakening. So, um, this is a game that's available right now on Steam. It is in early access. We're currently on version beta not dot one zero zero three. Unfortunately, there's no settings menu, so the audio is a little bit loud occasionally, and I can't control it, um, which is rather irritating. Um, but, you know, again, it's, it's early access. The game's overall quite complete, and... Uh, I don't know, I, I played it for a little bit and I think it's pretty fun. So, um, what is this game? Well, basically, uh, well, let's just dive in. We're gonna, we're gonna dive in and kind of play together and play it for a little while. We're gonna go with, uh, Gatherers, we'll do, like, normal world size, normal difficulty. Uh, we have no normal, actually, difficult slides don't work just yet, but... We're gonna play as Mokosh, Mother Earth, Life, Birth, Nature of Your Domain. There's, uh, what is this, eight different gods that you can play as? Basically, the, the premise is that you are this character, right? You're a god, and uh, you have, like, no power. Like, your power has been taken away somehow. And you're trying to get, regain power through your followers by helping them survive. Okay, so we've got Velis, who for some reason, um, for me, unlocked at level 1. Uh, Mokosh, who unlocked at level 2. Uh, when you load the game up, you just randomly have two unlocked. It's not like these are the two normal starting heroes or uh, gods. But these are the two that unlock for me. And in order to unlock the other ones, you have to uh, reach level 3 on any god to randomly unlock another god. So, um, I'm going to play as Mokosh in hopes that we actually unlock level 3 and can potentially get uh, more gods unlocked. So, by playing as Mokosh, all your villagers get a plus 1 bonus to gathering. We'll talk about gathering in a moment. Your settlement starts with a well already built and all villagers get plus 1 bonus to health. So, let's get going. And again, if, if the music gets a little bit overpowering at times, um, I apologize. I'm going to just try to keep my voice the same volume, and uh, it should come through clear. But, well, I guess we'll find out. I had already tried lowering, like, my uh, system volume for it, but it didn't work. Still captured it at full volume, which is kind of strange. Oh, well. Alright, we're going to skip the tutorial, because that's silly. Um, it also gives us five experience and three research points. So, my only... I, I hate to start off with complaints. <laughs> my only major complaint so far about this game is uh, just that there's, it needs more keyboard shortcuts. Um, as, uh, as everyone knows, I love keyboard shortcuts, and this game just doesn't have, like, any. It's pretty much all played with the mouse at this point, which is fine. It's fine, but... Um, it needs keyboard shortcuts. So, here is our town, Ostja, Ostolja, and uh, we have a, a party here um, that we can control. Again, you have to control using the mouse because there's no keyboard shortcuts. But um, let's see, what do we want to start with? So we're on turn number one. It's uh, it's currently daytime. Um, there's a person up there. We have four people in Ostolja. We have food enough for 18 turns, firewood enough for 20 turns. We are three out of 15 points towards research. Uh, which allows us to research um, the ability to like do new commodities and stuff. Five out of ten for experience. Um, how much more is needed for level up? I, I still actually don't know if that's related to me as the the deity or like my characters. Sometimes they randomly level up and like get more stats and stuff. So it could be one or the other. I'm not really sure. We'll find out. Uh, we do have the ability to do one research that we can unlock right now. It's like the research tree. We've got the gathering tree, the crafting tree, and the construction tree. Um, so you spend your advancement points to give you the ability to do new stuff. So before we unlock anything, um, let's just kind of get a, a feel for how our town's doing. So we'll go and inspect or manage the town. Okay, so nearby resources. Vegetables 1, wood 1. What that's saying is that if we go to here, we can see that within range, um, this, this town can reach vegetables and wood inside the town. Um, there's wood here, there's fish here, wood here, there's meat over there. And more wood over there. And that doesn't mean that there's only like one unit of it available. That just means that um, one task can be created. So we can create one vegetable task and one wood task for gathering. So we'll do that. If I were to create two vegetable tasks, then they wouldn't both be able to be worked because we only have one source of vegetables. So we're going to create jobs. We're going to set them on infinite because we want to basically have this job running all the time. This is going to provide most of our basic foods. And now we have available villagers to work these tasks. Dobromila has five gathering ability. So she can gather five times ten production per turn. This takes 40 production per turn to produce one thing of 12 vegetables. 
So if we put her in charge of that job, every single turn she'll complete it, and then every fourth turn she'll get completed it twice, and we'll actually get a double haul of vegetables. We'll also send this guy over here on wood, he'll do the same thing. He's going to collect one unit, one task of wood at three pieces of wood per turn, so he'll provide us with firewood. And so that's pretty much it for gathering. For crafting, we can make cooked meals, we can make clothes, craft tools, gathering tools. Obviously crafting tools and gathering tools are going to be really good. Um, this is like an item that you can give a character and it just permanently gives them a huge boost to their crafting or their, um, their gathering ability. But it takes some, some fancy pants materials that we don't yet have, um, I believe. Fairly certain, yeah, we need to use... Oh, we do have some steel, excellent. So we actually could use some steel. Mm, yeah, we could swing it. We could actually make a little bit of crafting tools. How about gathering tools? Uh, this requires... Yeah, we don't have that top one. We do not have whatever that thing is. I can't remember. It's like wheat or something. Uh, but crafting tools, by all means, let's uh, queue that one up. So we'll do that guy. Um, and then we'll throw... This is dark wood and this is regular wood. What kind of wood are we actually harvesting? Just regular wood. So we'll use up the regular wood then. So craft tools, some steel, regular wood for both the secondary material and the catalyst. So uh, this will create a set of crafting tools. Um, it's going to take 80 labor or 80 work to actually create it. Um, but yeah, by all means, let's create that job. We're going to run it one time because we only have a little bit of steel. And we're going to grab our best uh, crafting guy and have him do it. So it'll take him three turns to complete this task. And there's going to be a tiny bit of wasted production because he's only doing the task one time and he's going to end up with 90 overall production. And then finally we have Missia, who has a uh, pretty good gathering. Uh, let's do cooked meals, maybe? Let's see if this could work. So we could use our juicy chunk of meat. Um, we have a very small amount of herbs. And we could also use some of this dark wood. So what we're doing now is we're spending two meat, two herbs, and a little tiny bit of wood to create eight units of food. So we're doubling the amount of like food that we have from these two things at the cost of just two dark wood. So we're creating matter um, somehow. I don't know how. I guess they just you know it's better better for them. Won't win you any wards, but it'll fill you up. Mm. It seems like it. I mean, well, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure that we really need to do that just yet. Would it make sense to have her do that? Because she's only got one production. She's much better at, at, at uh, crafting. Uh, we could also do construction tasks. Currently we have a pasture uh, available to, to be constructed, but again, this costs stuff that we don't have the ability to do. So yeah, we're not going to construct that. We do have our well from being um, the, the deity that we are. Provides various resources said to come from the depths of Thea. Grants a random resource each turn. So what I'm going to do instead, we're actually going to create a new expedition real quick, and we're just going to grab Mizia, and uh, we're going to send her... Uh, to Expedition 2, and we're just going to have her leave and go gather some stuff on her own. She's hopefully going to be safe. Right now she's got nothing but a hatchet. She can carry a little bit of stuff. It's cool. She's going to need a little bit of food so she can survive some turns and some that kind of stuff. So we'll go to our food supply and we'll put some over there. We'll give her like, oh, I don't know, 10 days worth of... Let's give her like 5 meat and like 2 herbs. That gives her five turns worth of food, and we'll give her a little bit of that dark wood since we didn't end up using it. So she's got five turns she can go out and do some stuff. And what I'm doing is uh, we're going to go just have her go gather like fish or something so we get some diversity. So we want you to move. She can only move. How far? She can move five tiles. But we are like in like some sort of. I don't know. What would you call this? Snow? Seems like it. Well, let's have you move out of the way first. Yeah, this this is a unusual area. I've not actually seen this kind of weather. We'll have her go here. Then we'll have her make a camp. Making camp allows her to gather that wood. So we will have her gather wood. And we'll have her just do that for a few turns. Until she runs out of food. And we can't really go any farther at all. This is our second group. There's a whole group of people in this in this uh, this thing here. If we want to inspect it. Uh, we don't want to make a camp. We don't want to split. We want to just kind of... Inventory. 
Yeah, so there's actually quite a few people here. We've got six people in this expedition right now. And they are pretty well armed. Like, they've got 15 turns worth of food, 10 turns worth of uh, camp wood. And uh, some of them are actually pretty good at crafting and stuff. Let's see, can we... Uh, is there a better screen to... See what kind of stats... These are all the different stats that they have. So I want to see if any of them are really good at crafting or something. So we've got three crafting here. Looks like you don't really have any one gathering. Generally, I think that it's going to start you off with, with people out in the expedition to like do combat and stuff who suck at gathering. But, alright, well, whatever. That's basically the whole turn. Um, we could camp, but there's really no point in it. Um, no one's injured. And now we'll tell them to move again. This is where you need we need keyboard shortcuts. So we're going to go head over and see what that is. So Expedition 2, if we go check her out now, um, look at her inventory, we can see that she has gathered some wood. Regular wood. She started with the dark wood, if you recall. She's gathered four regular wood, evidently. Yep, so four per turn she's going to gather. At the cost of one. So she's just increasing our wood supply a little bit. Can't do that yet. And let's just go check on this town, see how it's doing. And as expected, we can probably expect we will find that um, overall some of our... Ooh, Amber Runestone. Using old Dwarven techniques, Runestones can give great protection from magic. Fancy. We have two children. Two child. Child. It doesn't say children, it just says child. But yeah, we're going to gather some of that stuff. It'd be nice if I could see. I'm not sure where we can tell what exactly the well is providing. But it would be nice to see what it provides. Alright, so let's go see what we have here. So now that we're here, we can inspect this thing. Search location. You stumble across some ruins of an old city engulfed in mist and misery. Let's search it. One of one of many buildings you tirelessly search through contains a closed stash. It took almost an hour to open, but luckily it's not empty. So we've gained a blunt great sword and a bone spike armor made of the bones of your fallen enemies. Take your loot. And we gain some experience. Cool. So we can uh, go to equipment and go see if anyone can use this. So Baska, one of our characters, notice that says their name if it's currently equipped. He's currently wearing bone spike armor and we have an extra one. This one only weighs 196, you can see right there. Um, this one weighs 220, so there must be a difference in something. I guess the material that it was made out of? This was actually superior armor to the one that Bosk is wearing. This was like 8 armor, and the new one is 10, so let's swap them. Okay, and then is there anyone else who can equip this armor? Looks like, uh... Bartosh. I think that that little, like, scribe little thing, maybe you could name rename your characters, but it doesn't seem to do anything yet. He can equip that, so might as well use that. And then there was one other thing. We've got a dew drop, like a drop of silver dew from the elvish, elven forest. This stylish light shield will protect you without encumbering. Well, it's not exactly true. He's currently using a wise man's arm. Anyone that could use a shield that we want to give a shield to? Yeah, Sergey. This one apparently <laughs> it's got, it gives him attractiveness. All right, well, it's superior in both armor and defense, and gives him attractiveness. So, by all means, there's a shield for you. Maya, you can use this shield if you can carry it. Uh, that actually might be why it wasn't equipped. No, he can actually carry it. Cool. All right, cool. So, we're using all of the equipment in our character's inventory right now. Uh, can you move any farther? No, you cannot. Okay. We'll get alerts when we get to the point where um, somebody cannot actually uh, like maintain their expedition. So we don't have to check them all the time, but if we check the inventory, we can see that she's down to three turns worth of food. So soon we're going to have to send her home um, or send someone else out to meet with her and bring her some food. But um, for now, let's go check out the research menu, see if there's anything we want to pick up. So gathering, I think, is like my preferred method. We can create uh, hand axes, we can create bows. Like right now, the only thing we know how to do is cooked meals. We could make baked meals. Um, I believe if I click this right now, it's just going to automatically unlock it. I don't really want to do that, so... Roasted meals... Way better than raw, and is practical for traveling. Roasted meals are lighter. Um, baked meals... Are lighter than carrying raw ingredients as well. Well, one of the things that's nice about unlocking... Um, gathering materials is that you get a small amount of those resources themselves. So I'm going to just go ahead and be kind of boring and unlock steel. Okay, so there is a pop-up dialogue before doing it. Let's see what happens if we click one of these. Okay, it doesn't say we're actually going to gain any. 
Researching steel will add 10 units of this resource to your settlement's inventory and reveal at least one place where it can be gathered. So we'll do steel, and that means that somewhere on the map, um, I don't know where, but somewhere we can we can definitely get steel. So we're going to want to find some of that. And we will end our turn. So I'm hoping we can do a little bit of combat in this first video. Um, this fort, this like frosty, frozen crap is really making it hard to, to move. Normally you can move a few tiles at once. There we go. There's some combat. All right, what do we got here? Production is complete. All right, so we have something that's complete in Ostoja. Let's check our inventory. We should have, yes, craft tools. A set of tools to make any crafting job easier. So we're going to go to um, villagers. We're going to go to some guy. Uh, nope, this is not the right embrace. I need to actually go out of this, go into here, go to equipment. Go to this guy, and now we can equip... In this slot here, we can make him equip that, assuming he's got the capacity for it, which he does. And so now, he gains five craft. See, right there in the center where it says properties. So now he has eight crafting ability. He's very good at that job now. So for crafting, um, maybe there's some other job we want him to do. Cooked meals maybe might make more sense. We have meat and vegetables now. You can actually mix just vegetables with vegetables, but uh, let's do meat and vegetables since we have quite a bit of meat right now. And we're going to burn some regular wood. We'll set that on infinite. And we will have Mr. Miskuber do that. So he's going to make a lot of meat stew very quickly with his new crafting tools. And in the meantime, um, looks like we actually have one more advancement point available already. We can unlock silver, gold, you know, more wood, different types of wood could be nice. Um... Maybe unlock some new construction. A watchtower. Allows you to see further, should say farther, distances. Increasing visibility around your, vi your village. Could be useful. We already have a well. I believe you can build more than one of the same thing, though. A smithy. A bit of craft this item. Proper place for crafting items and equipment. Increases crafting skill. Um, well, I don't really have any raw materials to build these things, so I'm not going to do that. I think we're going to just keep on focusing on gathering. Let's do, um... Cane. And we are almost up to some more experience. Okay, enemies spotted. Okay, production complete. Production complete, that's just because he's making lots of food. I think you are running out of food very soon. You've only got food for one more turn, so let's just see how you're doing on your gathering task. You're at zero out of forty. We'll let you collect for one more turn. It's fine. And let's head our way over here. You approach the beasts, and you have time to decide your plan of action. The best way to slay a beast is eye to eye, or we could retreat. Um, if we had better skills, there's apparently two other options available, but we don't have those skills, so we're going to go and do some combat. We're going to start a challenge with five crows. Um, these are the different skills that we're allowed to use. I'll explain it in a moment. We're not going to auto-resolve. My experience so far with auto-resolve is that you just take huge, huge damage for no reason at all. So, okay, this this is kind of complicated, but it's not actually that complicated. So, basically, we have two different groups of, of units, and I can't remember if it's uh, random or not, which group they're in, or if it's specific, or if it's shuffles. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. But basically, it's like a mini card game for combat. So, the enemy has played two crows. They have four defense out of four health. They do six damage. This guy's got four out of four with four damage. He is a level two crow. He's a level one crow. Now, I have one card that I'm allowed to play right now. I can either choose to play a support card or a, like, uh, whatever this sword thing is, like a combat card. So I could play Bartosh. He's going to end up to the right of these guys. He's got 18 HP, um, and he uses a piercing weapon. Or I could do this guy, who's got 11 defense. Boosts your defense temporarily when you enter the battlefield. So Maya can tank a little bit of damage. These guys do 10 damage. She can tank 11, so that seems like a good card to me. So she has 11 HP plus 11, and now I end my turn, and then this guy gets to take a turn now. Yet again, he, he's just going to play another crow. So notice how he's playing his, his uh, combat cards. Now he's only got two support cards remaining. Now I get to play two cards. So these guys will attack her, um, and then she gets to attack. She'll either attack this target or this target. Uh, doesn't really matter which one, she'll kill either. 
Um, I could either try to protect my ally and give him more shields. I don't really need to. I could try to confuse, which uh, makes the opponent's most recently played offensive card lose its attack phase in the first phase. Um, I don't really think we need to do that either. I think we just play another, you know, another basic unit. Um, we'll put you out there, Radomir. And then we're going to do counter tactic. Discard a random card from your opponent's tactics hand. That's over here. So we're going to just make that guy discard one of the crows. So we can deal with one of the crows in the next combat phase. Just makes it a little bit easier for this engagement. So he's obviously going to play this one. He's probably just going to put it on the front line. He's going to use this move, get closer thing. That's what those exclamation or question marks mean. Is that it's confused. There's two combat cycles. The first cycle, it doesn't actually get to attack because it was forced into the front line using get closer. Um, so now we have, again, three cards to play because he's got no more remaining. So we just get to play the rest of our hand. We're going to... Um, we'll go ahead and confuse, confuse that guy. Well, let's let's protect ally. Protect ally, then confuse, and then we'll play out Bartosh. All right, we'll just see how this kind of plays out. So now we don't do anything. Now we just watch. So fight phase one. Crow number one is going to attack Maya. Crow number two is going to attack Maya. Now Maya gets to beat somebody up. Would have been nice if she targeted the other guy. Radomir just killed a crow. And Bartosh killed a crow. Okay, phase two. Again, we're going to take a little bit of damage. So she took some hits. She's going to turn around and kill it. And now they're going to attack the discard pile. And we've killed all of the units. So we did take some damage, but it's not a big deal. Like, Maya's going to heal up um, every turn. So I could have probably played a little bit better and taken no damage at all, but whatever. It's not really a big deal. And we are at 10 out of 10 experience. So um, that will do that. And I guess... Experience-wise, uh, yeah, here we can see abilities have improved. And we can see no fuel, or fuel fuel is available for Expedition 2. So it's time for her to break camp. And uh, just have her move back to Ostoja. And we'll have her go home. And so she's just automatically dropped off all of her wood. And we can create a new Expedition or just have her work in the town for a bit. You know, whatever we want to do. So that's a, a very, very brief um, look at the very... You know, for seven turns of the uh, the awakening uh, i'm gonna take a break here if you want to see more of this campaign make sure you leave a comment like do all that kind of stuff um we'll keep playing for a while seems like a good idea and uh i'll see you again in the next video thanks for watching everyone see you soon